Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Shop Talk and this Shop Talk is entitled Homemade Test Gear Part 2 um, Yesterday I was working on this TS50 Kenwood that has no output power this was sent in from Chuck and he said the radio was in a minute on transmit power and then finally last you know it lost all its power so it has no power out um, I have been completely through the PA section of this radio and have found no problems in the PA section and a lot of times you know that's where your problem is located what I found in this radio is that the drive coming off the TXRX board is very low so most of the time I would take my O1 oscilloscope since this has all the built-in measurements and take a reading of that power level coming out of that TR, TXRX board but it's from here is it's very low and I'm not able to see a lot of power coming out so I've coupled from CN19 which is your drive out and I've attenuated and I've gone into the spectrum analyzer and let me see if y'all can see that pretty good I'll turn the light off and that should help a little bit and we have the radio on 14.200 and the spectrum analyzer on the matching frequency and when we key the mic on FM you can see there is a single coming out of the driver and it's very weak single I mean very weak um, it should be just about but the way I got it attenuated it should be that spike should go all the way up to the top of the screen but it's as you can see it's very low so I've always wanted a micro watt watt meter so I've decided to throw one together right quick and just wanted to show you how to do it and what I've done is took an old CB dozy watt meter this was the PM 1000-TS and I completely gutted it everything that was in it all but the meter is right here all wired to this one board and you know it uses a feed through through a coil as a pickup so I completely gutted that out and built a watt meter that will read from either 1 watt or 10 watts now this is also very good for QRP so let me show you how we went about doing this so to show you just how simple this circuit is these are all SO239's that's already in the uh, watt meter housing and we just got them jumped with a piece of wire straight off of them now I did come in here and installed a BNC connector also that is tied into that too that way on the input I can either use SO239 or a BNC and that is grounded as, as well so what we're going to do is come off here and we're going to install two resistors this one is 2.2k and this one is a happen to be a 10k so what we're going to do is run this to a switch so we can switch between the two 
the 2.2k will be our 0 to 1 watt and the 10k side will be from 0 to 10 watt and we're going to come here and we're going to add another resistor that is 22k potentiometer this side is going to go to ground and on our wiper side we're going to come off our wiper side and we're going to install a 1N 4148 diode just a simple diode then we're going to come into our meter our meter and most of the meters in some of these uh, dozy watt meters or one microamp we will connect to the plus side of the meter the other side of the meter goes to ground also on the plus side of the meter we're going to drop a 0 0.01 UF capacitor at 50 volts and that is basically our whole complete circuit it's not a whole lot to it um, when you build this use your depending on your meter if your meter is uh, one microamp use a 2.2k resistor and this trimmer part is to adjust the meter for one watt now you'll have to play with the other um, resistor mine happened to work out at 10k to get a full scale 10 watt reading so you know our single is uh, reduced down through the resistors it goes through our 22k part and rectify it and filter it and go to our meter so I have a radio here connected up to it and it's set at 1 watt output AM I've got the microphone turned down so it should not uh, bother the meter and I have calibrated it with a good known meter so when I key up you see the meter is going completely over to a thousand or 30 watts so that's showing 1 watt when I flip the switch down I'm in the 1 watt position I go to the 10 watt position you can see our meter comes up to 1 watt on the 30 watt range and this is simple but it's effective for reading um, you know low wattage so if you're running QRP and you know you putting out any weapon watt to five watts this would be ideal to use for that so the construction of this is very simple all I did was I installed a BNC connector I run one piece of copper clad all the way across all three terminals I picked off and you can see our 2.2k resistor and our 10k resistor and they're just going here to a double pole double throw switch well, actually this is a triple throw switch it's all I had in my box that was readily available and we come from the center connector and we come straight into the uh, center wiper of the uh, potentiometer one side is grounded the other side comes up feeds through this 1 in 40, 148 diode into our positive terminal across the terminals we have our 0.01 microfarad capacitor up to the ground lug and then we're going to ground and that is as simple as this is now I threw this thing together probably in about 15 minutes this morning because I wanted to uh, get an actual wattage me measurement of this radio and you know I'm planning on sitting here and redoing it and uh, shorten up some of the wiring and stuff in it and I'm going to put a new face on this meter and 
a bit of more, you know, uh, your adjustment and your high power, low power setting. I've also will go back and replant a new uh, face for the meter itself to read it out as I calibrate it. I just didn't have time to do all that this morning. I just wanted to go ahead and get it thrown together so I can get a meter reading. Again, the 10K side, you'll have to play with that. Set it with the 2.2K uh, the .2K, 1 watt side. And then, you know, you can start with the 10K and uh, work your way back and forth through that until you get it to read, you know, your full 10 watt scale. On the radio that I'm troubleshooting on, you can see here on a TX RX board that we're coming here to Q50, which is an, the uh, last amplifier on this board. And from Q50, we go out through this coil L55 and then into CN19. From CN19, we then go into the uh, amplifier and filter board. So, what we can do is a TMP connector here. We'll unplug that and we'll plug right into this TMP connector and try to read any um, wattage off of that amplifier that's right here. So here on the radio we can see CN19 here. Now I've already verified that the radio is going into transmit mode. Right here near the, near the front of the radio, right down here is an LED indicator also. And when the radio goes into transmit mode, you'll see it illuminate red. Let me cut the light off. Maybe you can see it a little better. There you go. You can see it turns red. So we already know our radio is going into transmit mode. So our... Uh, Coax is connected into CN19 and going into the BNC jack on the watt meter. And when I key the mic on the one watt setting, we have absolutely nothing. So at this time, I'm pretty sure that either Q50 is bad or there's a capacitor that's in Q50 that is probably shorted and could be holding the voltage back. Now, we already know that the capacitors have to be changed in this radio because we know you know from our previous TS50s we know what these capacitors do so far I haven't found any that's leaked in this one so I'm gonna go ahead and get the capacitors changed out probably this week and uh, again we go ahead and get this radio up and running but I just wanted to show you you know how simple it was to build a watt meter for low power because the only thing you know if you want to see something below one watt, it's hard to do it with a uh, a full-blown watt meter. Or you can get one of those, uh, I think it's LPF or LP meters that Peter uses. You know, many hundreds of dollars for that. <laughs> but uh, with this, you know, this is something simple that you probably have enough stuff in your junk box you can find to throw this together, and and you can go to hand fest and yard sales and flea markets and find these meters for a couple of bucks so they're real easy to uh you know to pick up and tear down and reconvert and it doesn't have to be a dozy it can be any any type of uh ocb meter as long as you got the one micro ramp meter in there you know it works pretty good i've had several people commented on some of my videos that see in my multimeter holders and as this is you know it's just a uh, a few pieces of wood cut screwed together you know put a few sides on it put a lip on the bottom to hold the meter in nothing very uh, fancy but it's very effective it'll hold your meter in place and you ain't got to worry about knocking it over I don't like those little plastic bezels that come in the back of these meters they don't never seem to want to hold right or get the meter at the right angle or you know, there's always seems to be a problem with them, so I like to just use these little cheap wooden meters. Um, one thing you want to do is knock your meter in the floor and damage it. Even my 
cheap uh, Chinese component tester, you know, this is one of my older multimeter stands that I had. I just tore it down, cut it down a little bit, and put some standoffs in here and just bolted the little circuit board right to the, uh, the back plane of it. Run around the back and took a copper strap, cut it and slid the battery down into it to hold the battery out. You know, the battery will not fall out because I split the copper on both sides and tucked it under. That way it has to push against the battery. Holds it pretty good. You know, very cheap, effective. Gets the job done. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. Um, you know, it was just something that's very simple to do. It's not hard at all. Um, very few components are used in it. And a lot of us have this stuff laying around in a, a junk box. You can play around. You don't have to use an old CB watt meter. You know, if you have a cabinet and a one milliamp meter, uh, one microamp meter, you can uh, throw this thing together in no time. Anyway, I'll leave a link down below to the website if you want to discuss it. And I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one.